I got even with my unfaithful wife and daughter, now they regret it. The evening sun cast a warm glow over the suburban neighborhood, its golden rays filtering through the blinds of the Parker household. John Parker sat at his kitchen table, the hum of the refrigerator the only sound breaking the silence. He glanced at the clock. His wife Linda, and that daughter Emily, should have been home by now. As minutes ticked by, a gnawing sense of unease settled in his stomach. His phone buzzed, pulling him from his thoughts. It was a message from an unknown number. Hesitant, he opened it. The message was brief, but its contents sent a chill down his spine. You deserve to know the truth. Attached were several photos of Linda and a younger man, their intimacy undeniable. Further down, there were pictures of Emily with the same man, their body language disturbingly close. John's heart pounded in his chest. The betrayal was like a physical blow. How could the two people he loved most in the world do this to him? He needed answers, but more than that, he needed a plan. Confrontation alone wouldn't suffice. He needed to make them truly regret their actions. John knew he couldn't act on impulse. He needed more information, a clearer picture of the extent of their betrayal. He had a private investigator named Mark, a seasoned professional with a reputation for uncovering the truth. Mark was thorough. Within weeks, he provided John with a comprehensive dossier, photos, videos, and transcripts of conversations. The affair had been ongoing for over a year. The man Chris was someone Linda had met through a mutual friend, and Emily had been pulled into the deception as well. The depth of their deceit was staggering. The realization was devastating, but it also fueled John's resolve. He couldn't simply confront them with accusations. He needed to expose their betrayal in a way that would leave a lasting impact, a way that would make them truly regret their actions. John began to formulate his plan with meticulous care. He started by organizing all the evidence Mark had gathered into a detailed file. He documented every lie, every meeting, every promise they made to each other. He even created a timeline to show the overlap between their deceit and their interactions with him. Next, John began to subtly manipulate the situation to his advantage. He encouraged Linda and Emily to spend more time together, knowing that they would use the opportunity to meet Chris. He planted small, seemingly innocent questions in their conversations, designed to confirm his suspicions without raising theirs. John also started to distance himself emotionally, preparing for the inevitable confrontation. He needed to be strong to ensure that his revenge would have the desired impact. He wanted to make sure that when the moments came, there would be no room for denial. The opportunity for John's grand reveal came in the form of a family reunion. They had planned the gathering months in advance, inviting close friends and relatives. This year, however, the reunion would serve a different purpose. John spent weeks preparing for the event, ensuring that every detail was perfect. He invited all their close friends, family, and even some of Linda and Emily's colleagues. He wanted as many people as possible to witness the fallout. The day of the reunion arrived, and John played the perfect host. He greeted each guest with a smile, his heart pounding with anticipation. Linda and Emily were there, laughing and chatting as if nothing were amiss. John watched them closely, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. After dinner, John stood up to make a toast. He held his glass high, his voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Thank you all for coming tonight, he began, his eyes scanning the room. I have a special presentation for you. He signaled to the AV technician, who dimmed the lights and started the slideshow. The room fell silent as images and footage of Linda and Emily's affair with Chris played on the screen. Gasps and whispers filled the air, the shock and disbelief palpable. Linda's face paled, and Emily looked like she wanted to disappear. John looked at them, his expression cold and unyielding. This is what betrayal looks like, he said, his voice filled with bitterness. This is what infidelity feels like. And now, everyone knows. The reunion ended in chaos. Guests left in shock, murmuring about the scandal that had just unfolded. Linda and Emily were left to face the fallout, their reputations in tatters. Linda tried to reach out to John, but he refused to listen to her excuses. Emily disappeared from the event, unable to face the consequences of her actions. John filed for divorce the next day, and news of the affair spread quickly through their social circles. Linda lost her job when her employers found out about the scandal, and Emily's academic prospects were jeopardized. They had planned to start a new life together, 
but instead, they found themselves isolated and ostracized. John focused on rebuilding his life. He threw himself into his work, finding solace in his friends and family. But the emptiness remained. Despite the satisfaction of seeing Linda and Emily face the consequences of their actions, the betrayal had left a deep scar on his heart. Months passed, and John began to find a new sense of normalcy. He moved to a new house, hoping a change of scenery would help him move on. One day, as he was sorting through his mail, he found an unmarked envelope. Inside was a single piece of paper with a cryptic message. You don't know the whole story. Meet me at the park tomorrow at noon. John's curiosity was piqued. Who would this be? What more could there be to know? Despite his better judgment, he decided to go. He needed closure, and this could be his chance to get it. The next day, John arrived at the park, scanning the area for anyone who might be waiting for him. A woman approached him, her face partially hidden by a large hat. She introduced herself as Claire, Chris's estranged sister. I'm sorry to contact you like this, Claire began, but there's something you need to know. Linda and Emily didn't start the affair on their own. They were manipulated by someone else. Claire's revelation left John stunned. What do you mean they were manipulated? He asked, trying to process the information. Claire explained that Chris had gotten involved with a dangerous group of people who used blackmail and manipulation to control their members. Linda and Emily had become targets because of their connection to John, who was a successful entrepreneur. The group saw an opportunity to gain influence over John through Linda and Emily's affair. They threatened Chris. Claire said, her voice trembling. They said if he didn't go along with their plan, they would ruin his life. And Linda and Emily, they were coerced. They made them believe that you were in danger if they didn't comply. John felt a mix of anger and disbelief. He had thought he knew the full extent of the betrayal, but this new information painted a more complex picture. He realized that Linda and Emily might not have been entirely at fault. They had been pawns in someone else's game. Determined to uncover the truth, John began working with Claire to investigate the group behind the manipulation. They spent weeks digging through documents, following leads, and interviewing people who had been affected by the group's schemes. They discovered that the group was led by a man named Victor, a ruthless businessman who used blackmail and coercion to get what he wanted. Victor had a network of associates who helped him carry out his plans, and he had targeted John because of his success and influence. As they gathered more evidence, John realized that he couldn't let Victor get away with what he had done. He needed to take action, not just for himself, but for everyone who had been hurt by Victor and his group. With the help of Claire and Mark, the private investigator, John devised a plan to expose Victor and bring him to justice. They gathered all the evidence they had collected and presented it to the authorities. John knew that confronting Victor directly would be dangerous, but he was determined to see it through. The day of the confrontation arrived, and John felt a mix of fear and determination. He arranged a meeting with Victor under the pretense of negotiating a business deal. He wore a wire, ensuring that every word Victor said would be recorded. As they sat in Victor's luxurious office, John played his part, pretending to be interested in Victor's proposals. But when the moment was right, he confronted Victor with the evidence, revealing the full extent of his manipulations. Victor's calm demeanor cracked, and he tried to deny everything. But John's determination and the mountain of evidence were too much. The authorities, who had been listening in, stormed the office and arrested Victor on multiple charges, including blackmail and coercion. With Victor behind bars, John felt a sense of relief and closure. The group's influence was dismantled, and many of their victims began to rebuild their lives. Claire was able to reconnect with Chris, who had been deeply affected by his involvement with the group. John reached out to Linda and Emily, wanting to hear their side of the story. They met in a quiet cafe, and both women tearfully explained everything. They admitted to their mistakes and the fear that had driven their actions. They expressed deep remorse for the pain they had caused John. John listened, his heart heavy with conflicting emotions. He realized that while the betrayal had hurt him deeply, he couldn't deny the manipulation and fear that had driven Linda and Emily's actions. He decided to forgive them, not just for their sake, but for his own peace of mind. In the months that followed, John focused on rebuilding his life. He continued to work on his business, finding new joy and purpose in his career. He also deepened his relationships with friends and family, 
cherishing the support they had given him through the ordeal. He and Linda decided to remain friends, both understanding that their marriage was over but wanting to move forward without animosity. Emily, too, sought redemption, working with Claire to help the victims of Victor's schemes. John's journey had been long and painful, but he had emerged stronger and wiser. He had learned the importance of forgiveness, not just for others, but for himself. He had taken matters into his own hands, not out of vengeance, but out of a desire for justice and healing. Years later, John stood in the garden of his new home, watching the sun rise over the horizon. He felt a deep sense of contentment and fulfillment, knowing that he had turned his pain into a force for good. His charity work had flourished, helping countless individuals find their own paths to healing and redemption. He had built a new life for himself, one filled with hope and possibility. As he watched the sun rise, he reflected on his journey. He had faced unimaginable betrayal, but he had emerged stronger and wiser. He had discovered the power of forgiveness and the importance of resilience. And most importantly, he had learned that true strength came from within, from the ability to rise above the hurt and create a future filled with love and hope. And in that moment, as the first rays of sunlight touched his face, John knew that he had finally found the peace he had been searching for.